So our next video is laparoscopic revision of long limb loop gastric bypass by Dr. Daniel Heron for, uh, from Monsanto School of Medicine. I'd like to thank Sages for the privilege of presenting this video, which was made by my two laparoscopic fellows last year. Unfortunately, uh, neither of them could make it to the meeting, so I'm presenting it on their behalf. If we can play the video without the sound, please. Or I could act it out if you don't have the video. I'd do some interpretive dance, perhaps. Oh, we could play charades? Uh, well, I, I can get started telling you about this patient who had been uh, super morbidly obese with a body mass index uh, uh, close to 60, if memory serves. And he had gone elsewhere to have a mini gastric bypass or a loop gastric bypass performed. Um, he came to us sometime afterwards for a revision. Here are my disclosures. So his body mass index was 65, and he had gotten a loop gastric bypass in 1999. And uh, initially, he did well with excellent weight loss. Um, just uh, to review what a mini gastric bypass is, is it's a very long gastric pouch uh, based on the lesser curvature and a 100 centimeter afferent limb. He dropped down about 98 kilograms, but then he regained up to 120, went back to see his original surgeon, who revised him to a distal loop gastric bypass. So what had happened is that they took down the initial anastomosis and moved it 100 centimeters away from the terminal ilium. Well, he came into our hospital about 10 years after his original surgery uh, with acute respiratory distress in aspirin toxicity. He'd been taking one and a half grams a day of aspirin because he had chronic epigastric pain. He also had ongoing severe weight loss and lower extremity edema. And when we saw him, he was quite cachectic on appearance. Uh, his albumin was extremely low, 1.8. His weight was 73 kilograms, and he had a severe metabolic acidosis from the aspirin toxicity. We put the plan together to treat his malnutrition, get his albumin above three, and then take him back to the operating room and revise him from a long limb loop gastric bypass to a short limb Ruan Y gastric bypass. So our operative plan was to take down his uh, old anastomosis and convert him to a small gastric pouch and then convert the loop to a Ruan Y with a 100 centimeter Ru limb. When we first took a look laparoscopically, we were happy that there were not too many adhesions present. You can see that there's a very long uh, gastric pouch. This one we, we later measured to be about 15 centimeters in length. There's the anastomosis between the stomach and the jejunum, or the ilium rather, and you can see that there was a widely patent Peterson space behind the, the intestine. The first thing we needed to do was confirm the anatomy, so we went down to the ileocecal junction and measured backwards and confirmed that there was only about a 100 centimeter common channel, so it was a highly malabsorptive operation. Here you can see we're working our way backward, there's the pancreas, and uh, our first step, our next step rather, was to divide the gastroileostomy. When you do this, you want to be careful because you're stapling across an old staple line. Uh, but there didn't seem to be too much scarring here, so we used a standard blue load. And you want to be careful not to unduly narrow the small bowel. So you can see it was uh, fairly straightforward to divide that anastomosis without narrowing the bowel. We put a ruler inside so we could measure the gastric pouch, and you can see it's 15 centimeters long. We wanted to reduce this to be about 4 centimeters long, which is more in keeping with our standard uh, Rue en Y gastric bypass. And we felt that the excessively long pouch may have been one of the reasons uh, why he uh, didn't lose adequate weight with the first operation. You can see it took two firings of the blue stapler to come across that gastric uh, pouch, and we're removing the part that we resected in a catch bag. Now the next step is to convert the loop to a Ruan Y. At this point, he was extremely skinny, so it was one of the easiest Ruan Ys I've ever had the privilege of doing. You can see it's, it's very easy to find the ligand matrites, and we measured out a point about 50 centimeters further down. And then we uh, measured out another 100 centimeters down for our rule limb, as we do in a standard short limb gastric bypass. And as we're looking down the bowel, you can see this is the site where his original gastrojejunostomy was before he was revised to the long limb operation. 
So we went just about 10 centimeters distal to that for our anastomosis. Again, this is a standard distal anastomosis. We used a white load of the stapler to minimize bleeding. And the remaining enterotomy gets closed with a simple running suture of uh, 2 silk. We feel very strongly that it's important to close all the internal hernia defects. So here we're using another 2 silk to close the distal mesenteric hernia defect. And one hint is you can see I'm using a pretty large size needle there. If you use a needle that's a little bit larger than a standard GI needle, it makes it much easier to, to do a purse string closure and, and speed up your mesenteric closure. So there's our completed distal mesenteric closure. And then we looked back up toward the gastric pouch. Now we divided the lower part, so the pouch was now about four centimeters long, but you can see it's quite densely adherent. And this is something, whether it's a VBG or a prior gastric bypass, these staple lines are, are very adhesiogenic. And here you can see that the, the gastric pouch that we're seeing on the left of the screen is, is quite densely adherent to the gastric remnant, which is toward the right of the screen. And I'm doing my best to do careful dissection here to separate the two, but uh, they were really, really stuck. And I was nervous about making a hole in the stomach. Um, and I was also nervous that there might have been a gastrogastric fistula, although we did not see one on preoperative endoscopy or imaging. Uh, but because of the density of the adhesions, I felt it was safest to go through this with a stapler. It was very uh, dense, uh, scarred tissue, so we used a green load. And uh, after two firings, we were able to completely separate the stomach pouch from the remnant. Now there's the remnant we're looking at. It's still adherent to some uh, posterior adhesions, which we're taking down with the ultrasonic scalpel. And anytime you do this kind of dissection, you have to be worried you're gonna make the gastric remnant ischemic. And sure enough, we did. Uh, I don't know if you could notice, but the tip of that was quite blue. So we decided to resect the upper part of the stomach rather than leave a potentially ischemic uh, segment of stomach inside. The rest of the operation is just our uh, standard uh, gastric bypass anastomosis. We're doing a two-layer linear stapled gastrojejunostomy. Again, the stomach pouch is a little beat up because it's been uh, operated on uh, before, uh, but we do the operation the same way. We're using a linear stapler, inserting at 30 millimeters, uh, and creating a linear stapled uh, gastrojejunostomy. And then the, gas, the uh, opening is closed with a uh, simple running suture. We use Vicryl, which is absorbable, so that we can minimize the risk of ulcer formation afterwards. And then that gets closed. Once again, we feel it's very important to close all the mesenteric defects. And I'm using a large needle on a 2 silk to close the Peterson hernia defect. Start off with a little purse string, and then we run it up to the level of the stomach, providing a complete closure of that defect. We felt that internal hernia may have been one of the causes of his pain. And then I always tuck in my anastomosis with a little blanket of omentum. Uh, we did a routine upper GI, which showed a normal small gastric pouch and no leakage. And his post-operative, of course, was unremarkable. Unremar he went home on day two and did well with his weight stabilizing and his protein returning to normal. So uh, one of the take-home points is that pain after a loop gastric bypass may be due to either bile reflux or an internal hernia. Uh, certainly, malnutrition should be corrected before you do any revision, and by reducing the size of the pouch, you may uh, uh, improve the weight maintenance over the long term. So this uh, patient ultimately did well, his weight stabilized, and his, uh, uh, his protein came back to normal. Uh, one last point is that you do need to be careful that any ischemic tissue uh, does get resected. So I thank you very much for your attention. This paper is open. This paper is open for discussion. Yes, back microphone. Thanks, God, Dallas. Dan, nice work. I'm glad we didn't have to see you uh, do any uh, mimes or any acting this out. Oh, okay. Um, curious, you, you know, we all kind of get uh, worried the more staple lines we put up there on our pouches, um, et cetera. Did you think about intraoperative endoscopy to see if there, you know, reconfirm that there was no gastrogastric fistula and just leave that remnant kind of glued to the backside? Uh, well, it's an excellent point, and uh, at this point, we routinely use intraoperative endoscopy. Um, whenever you're firing a staple line roughly in the neighborhood of an old staple line, you're worried that if you're not right on top of the old one, you might leave uh, uh, an encapsulated piece of bowel with, which has no means of emptying. So that's a concern, and you're also concerned that you may have an inadequate staple line, which could cause a leak. Uh, so I think that that's a terrific recommendation. Um, I don't believe we did it in this case, uh, but I, I, uh, I would wholeheartedly agree with you that it's an excellent tool. Yeah, 
I believe the indication for the surgery was not weight regain, it was just the malnutrition aspect of it. What was the reason in making that long gastric pouch into a regular Ruanwe gastric pouch? Was there any indication in that? Well, it's, a, it's an excellent uh, question. Um, the, uh, you have to remember that he was converted from a short limb loop gastric bypass to a long limb gastric bypass for weight regain. And so we didn't want to uh, fix his malnutrition but just give him weight regain. So we felt that the excessively long pouch may have been one of the causes for inadequate weight loss after the first operation before he was then converted to a long limb. So since we were getting rid of the malabsorptive component of his operation, we felt that we would increase the restrictive component. Dan, how long did it take uh, on TPN before you thought he was ready for surgery? This guy was uh, chronically malnourished for a long period of time. Uh, he started off with a with a albumin of 1.8, and after three weeks of TPN, we got him up to uh, 3.2. Can you comment on the use of uh, oversewing staple lines in reduced surgery? What's your normal approach? Um, again, I, I think uh, th there's redo surgery and there's redo surgery. Um, we're showing on another uh, video tomorrow uh, where the, the tissue is much more uh, adhesed. Uh, you know, here the tissue planes were very clean and, and we didn't feel that we needed to modify our regular technique too much, so we didn't do much over sewing. Uh, but obviously if you have um, denser adhesions and you have to do more dissection and there's more uncertainty about the quality of your staple lines or the quality of the tissue, I, I agree with you that over sewing is a good idea. Thank you very much. Thank you.